All right, just doing a quick video to documentate setting up all these big boys here. Um, so quick, quick little description of what everything is is here is my uh, PowerVolt Dell PowerVolt um, M1000s or MD1000s, and they're happy and working minus the three drives and then I got one bad set of drive here on number two slot um, but other than that there are all 3000 gig uh, SAS at 10k so it's pretty pretty good system total storage um, with with one on one raid card or on one raid configuration is 60,000 terabytes of data uh, currently, it's it's going to be getting set up for a cloud here shortly. Up top is the Dell PowerEdge 815, R815. It's, uh, I think it's 2.6 gigahertz at four processors, um, totaling 48 cores, uh, combined across all four processors. Let's take this off real quick. So here we have the hard drive configuration. Um, this actually needs to get redone, and I say that because when I installed Windows Server 2019 on it, uh, for whatever reason, when I clicked um, configure drive, it split my total memory into do two different partitions. So it's gonna have to get redone later. Right now it's working fine, so I'm not gonna mess with it until I'm ready to go. Um, and then I'm worried about getting all these other big big guys set up here but uh, So that's this is a pretty good server it runs on 256 gigs of RAM Oops, Wrong way uh, Yeah, 256 gigs of RAM and Currently it has a fiber LC fiber connection going to it from my network switches up there Which we'll get to here in a sec uh, Above that we have a simple little cyber power CPS 1215 RM and it does the job pretty good and then one thing I'm messing around with and I've been having a problem here lately is because I'm pulling too much power on the main side so I'm kind of using two different backups right now this is taking half the load on half the the, the uh, power supplies and then this APC 2200 down here is taking the other half of the load so each server has half and half and they're all off right now um, so that just I guess that works for redundancy and that way it keeps the load down on this so if I plugged everything on this the load usually climbs up to about another light yeah see there you go in and out but it's nowhere near as bad as it was and then when I had the load strictly being thrown onto this it would instantly trip the breaker in the garage so I have to um, get an electrician out here to wire a 30 amp outlet probably right here in the wall that way I can run all my main power to that area and then I go from there and that should resolve that problem um, and these are just batteries that are replaced back in the uh, UPS system but we'll talk about that in a different video because there's a couple of things I want to teach everybody about these APC backup supplies um, no it's not ready for network configuration yet but like I said I the, I kind of just started this project this rack I've only had for about three days now so bringing it home in pieces and putting everything together was was another different animal uh, kind of wish I would have done a video on that but it will anyways so yep there's my other power supply just taking on half the load for the time being it's not the best it gets me by. Here is a PowerEdge 2950 configured for Windows Server 2016. Um, and then all of these servers, with the exception of the R815, are on Rapid Rail systems. For people that are not familiar with Rapid Rails, it basically just gives you the option to slide the server out. And then if you need to, you can just open it up like this, and boom get access to whatever you need to work on. Um, this was gonna be one of my Mega Raid controllers, but I haven't figured out if I'm gonna do that with it yet or not. 
Otherwise, these things are a pain in the ass to close sometimes. There we go. Otherwise, um, it's probably just going to be a standby server for redundancy. I'm not too sure what they're going to be yet. Power Edge 2950s are very loud and obnoxious air hogs. So I might just keep it off for a little while here. Um, keep it off and then have it turned on with DAT configuration. So that might help a little bit as far as power consumption and uh, heat in this room. And then next we have two PowerEdge 805s that have not been configured yet, but they all have uh, their drives in them. These are not SAS, these are SATA. Just 500 gigs, there's two of them in there. I'm sorry, yeah, 205 gig SATA drives at 7 point, I think it's 7.2K RPM, which is the standard. Uh, 5400 is the standard on these drives, okay. I guess the desktop drive, I'm not a big drive guy. So, um, these are all 3,000, 3,000 um, gigabyte. These are the same drives that are in the power bolts. I just took a couple out. I took a couple out of the, these here and threw it in here just to help get memory into this. So that's good storage there. Um, yeah, and then we have the two PowerEdge uh, R805s. They have not been turned on or configured yet. They do work, they do boot up with BIOS, so that's good. No problems, no front end alarms. Um, those both work decent. And then we have an HP oh, ProLiant DL380GS, or G5, I'm sorry. Um, I've never messed with an HP server before. So this is gonna be a learning curve for me. I've never touched it. I don't know, it booted up when I looked at it and the BIOS looked good, but as far as the configuration settings and how to actually go into BIOS and enable certain things, I'm not familiar with yet. So that's gonna be a learning curve that I'm extremely excited that I got the opportunity to have. So I'm looking forward to messing with this one. Uh, another 805 up here, more drives. These are SAS 73 gigs, I believe. Oh no, these are SATAs. Yeah, I'm sorry. These are th SATA 1000 gigs. So it's about 2000 gigs here for memory. Um, and then we have the PowerEdge 1950 with two, two terabyte SATA drives, total of four terabytes. It's only 16 gigs of RAM, I believe, on this one. And then we have the Cisco Catalyst uh, 37G series PoE. Uh, switch so on these switches I'm not a big fan of the Cisco switches um, and the reason being is generally I have like third-party brands of like this IntelliNet here and then I have this uh, I see ICOM or ACOM ACOM switch here but this is also PoE and this is just standard unmanaged this one is, of course, a managed switch. It's got the stuffs on. It's got the uh, ports on the back, and it's got the stack option on the back of it. But the problem about the Cisco switches is they are extremely proprietary. So half of the SFPs that I have. Oh crap! Yes, the fiber cable's on. I know I shouldn't have dropped it. Um, a lot of the SFPs that I have are not compatible with that switch. It generally only takes Cisco switches. Um, it doesn't take Ericsson, it won't take HPs, it won't take any of those. So I think the reason I'm, I am having this up here is just it's another switch and I'm gonna use it mainly for ethernet. I was wondering if I should put all the servers into a fiber switch, um, which there, I do have a fiber switch I can go buy. It's pretty cheap for around $300. Uh, it's a 24 port fiber switch. So that might be an option. I just gotta look up the brand to make sure that I don't have any compatibility issues with it. Um, so next step for the rack here is I just got done putting all of these ethernet cables into the back of that uh, patch panel. And right now they're just hanging down like rack hair, but they will be integrated into the servers here shortly. And that's gonna be the next thing I'm gonna have to do so all these ends are going to have to be terminated for cat 5 um, 
I have a lot of Cat5 connectors. I do have Cat6 cable, but Cat5, I have a ton of Cat5 connectors and I don't really need to buy any more. So I want to try to avoid to use the, I want to try to avoid using the Cat5 or Cat6 cable for a while and just use the Cat5. So that's the deal with that. Um, the trick with the Ethernet though is when you terminate it and you cut it to length, you got to make sure that it's enough for all the racks to to slide out and still have ample room to be connected because when these are all on they're not supposed to turn off and if I need to work on it or if I need to pull it out for any reason um, I can pull it out and work on it or I don't know do something with it while it's still online and that way I don't have to reach back here and mess around with cables so that's something I want to stay or steer clear of uh, and then this rack over here is my network side of things kinda this is my two of my switches. Um, another patch panel there is my little night owl security systems. The blue fans just to help a little bit of airflow, and they're mainly just there for looks. And then I have my PowerEdge R610, which is awesome. If anybody's looking to start doing their own kind of server things, the PowerEdge R610 and the PowerEdge 2950s are both really cheap machines, and they're tanks they will last you forever as long as you want to put up with them um, and once again 2950 can't go wrong with I've had this one for about seven years I think beautiful machine it was running 24 7 for four years and now I just this was my old file file server so I'm gonna be reconfiguring everything to basically have this is my cloud storage now or this down here is my cloud storage and then this will be maybe a standby storage for redundancy. I don't know, something like that. And then we have another PowerEdge 805. Um, I got this one still in the box. It was refurbished and it is in pretty much turnkey condition. All of these are in turnkey with the exception of these two. And I say that because I haven't, I haven't, I haven't configured them on Windows or anything, so I don't know if there's going to be any internal problems aside from the BIO systems. But um, this one should be ready to go. It's got drives in it as well. So, uh, what is this? I think this is an SAS. Yeah, this is a serial attached SCSI, and it's for 73 gigs. So, let's see here. Come on. I don't know. Anyway. Um, so that's the rack stuff so far. I'm gonna do another update when I get everything wired in partially And we're gonna do a lot more of the heavy integration side on Sunday, which I might record a little bit of but until then um, I will see every see everybody later and Yeah, I'll update everybody when I get these this uh, rack, rack wired up to where it needs to be